Sitä. Martina! Martina! Do you reckon she got the card? She better have. She's gonna go ballistic. It's only a bit of crack. Don't forget to ask Dad. Why me? You're the oldest. You better not be using my lippy in there. All yours. Dad. The answer is no. You don't even know what she's going to ask. We're not getting the phone. Why not? That's why. Wait a minute. What's this? I wonder who it's for. Oh, no. <laughs> Where's mine? Oh, uh, it's in the next post. I wonder who that's from. David's parents have a phone. That's what I'm afraid of. I can just see the pair of you yakking away for hours. Oh, lovey-dovey. Everyone has one these days. What's this? A full-on assault? What if we were to pay for it, Dad? I'll think about it, OK? That means no, then. I said I'd think about it. Thanks, love. Make sure that young fellow doesn't spend all day in the ladder. Huh? Told us not to crowd him. So, are you going to lend us me, aren't you? No. Give her a lend your top. Why should I? She's your sister, that's why. I gave you a lend me lippy. No, you didn't. Sisters are supposed to share. I'll think about it. Hiya. Hi, David. Young love. Yeah. Have you seen Robert? Walk with a Mary. And? Everything's fine, OK? Early for that. Jealous, Jimmy? You all have to move on. Even Robert, from what I hear. Did you not know? Yeah. Yeah, of course did. <clears throat> Anything for me? I just want to pay the lecky. Your mom. Face like a smacked arse on her. She wants me to babysit with her tonight. Tonight? It's Friday, Jimmy. Suits in the freezer and everything. That's why the face. Jimmy, William, stop yapping like a pair of L ones and get the cabinets filled up. Oh, by the way, I'll be letting you know this evening which one you're on keeping on. What? I thought we had till the end of the month. Yeah, well, you see what Todd did. We'll be back in a minute. Yeah, joy or shy. It's me, foot. Might be me. Yeah, me. You're looking well today, Mrs. Duffy, so what can I get you? Would you like a bit of white pudding? Or would you prefer the black lad? Maybe a bit of both? If you don't have the measurements, we can't give you a price. Hiya, Robert. Give us a look. What, do you think I'm going to tear it up or something? You should have told me. Yeah, I know. What's our name? Paula. Didn't take him long. No. Model for us all with that card. Still pointing, are you? Fuck off, Paris. Must get myself one. Take more than a card, would you? You need to buy the whole shop. Don't know about that. 
I'm not interested, Carlos. Your sister is well. Came this morning. Says he's going to reveal himself tonight. That's nice. I'm sure it's him. Who? Your man. From the vegetable department in Super Quinn. Even cut off a lock of his hair, look. Don't build your hopes up. Put deposit on them shoes and all. For your man? No. He's gonna buy them in any way. Your man's gonna go ballistic. Well, you're only young once. Sister Mary. I told you that in confidence. Yeah, we're not gonna pull much if you're dressed in a habit. I'm only thinking about it. That's why you're meeting carrots, is it? Put you off men for the rest of your life. I couldn't say no. Well, you better learn quick. They don't call him the octopus for nothing. See you later. I'll see you later. But if I'm the first to rise above, please give him a message, a sign of love, written in marker, pen, sorry, sealed with a kiss. His name is David, the guy that I miss. <laughs> Morbid, isn't it? It's better than roses are red. <laughs> Violets are blue. Drop, Drop your cacks and give us a goo. Bumped into Martina this morning. Glad you two were talking again. Yeah, it's Freddie put up a better dump of them. It was mutual. Rebound, Joby. Here, on the house. You get yourself into trouble. Could be, I'll show you. I'll fix up with you one day. Who oh, Mrs. Keegan in the book, Carol? That's a pound of stew and beef. I saw that. Well, good way, Mr. Kelly. Albert, thought you'd be at home pouring yourself into your soup for tonight. No, JB neither. He's gone for a job interview with your man Butterly. To work in the Stardust? The star man out in Wonder Where Hills the other back. It was a pound of sausages. Case for Errol, Eddie. What? Probably needs a bit of extra padding for the final tonight. <sighs> I've had a breakfast in the morning. After sticking them down his jocks all night? Ah, that's disgusting. <sighs> we'll still eat them though. Too fucking right. You stick them in the book for us, Kevin. Oh. Hey, Albert. Say hello to Errol for us, will you? <laughs> Mr. Burley. Oh, that's me, yeah? Jimmy Buckley. I'm here for the star man's job. Oh, that's right, yeah. So, I'll talk to you then. Well, what do you think of the place? Yeah. Looks great. Used to be a jam factory. Yeah, I remember. You could smell the fruit from oils. You live around here? Bunnybrook. You ought to work long? Six months. Place closed down. We just had a new baby. Hard times we're living in. Still, Charlie's the man to get us out of it, what? Hope so. Job's yours. Thank you, Mr. Portney. Thank you. No problem. You come in Monday and I'll uh, show you the ropes. I'll see you Monday. Thanks. See you later. Hey, David. How are you, girls? How are you? Yeah. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. It's gorgeous. Thanks. What's up? I have to work a late shift. Double time. I'm supposed to be going to the stairs. So I'll say no. Shifting going on tonight will be something else. Disco championships. It's going to be wall to wall. To be begging for. It'll be delivered first thing tomorrow morning. You're a great girl. Thank you very much, Mary. Thanks very much. Thought they'd never leave. Let's go. Off the oh, come on, the shop will be shut and I need them shoes for tonight. Tell me or I'll meet on site. 
tired ass. See you tonight then. Oh, actually, I'm not going. Huh? Yeah, man's going out. She needs someone to babysit. Well, uh, once it's not because of me and Paula. <laughs> Don't flat yourself. Why'd you do that? What? Stick it in the freezer. Cut your finger off that crease, you would. If you don't look slick, you're just a geek. Where is he? Five past, what you see? No, Colonel. Jimmy. Hey. Looks like the wedding's off. Lads. I'm oh, sorry, Liam. Don't think Butcher and Joe 40. Fair enough. You're not on bollocks to work for it anyway. Up in court, really? Job interview. Oh, yeah? How'd it go? Didn't. Once they see the north side near your address, that's it, man. Tell me about it. Should I miss me scratching and all over? Roll on tonight. I got a crisps and a pint of my wedding, please. Shit. What? Get in. Here's your wages, Mum. Thanks, love. What's that about? The usual. You're giving me too much, love. Overtime from last week. Overtime, sure. You OK? Not going. What? Stardust, I'm not going. What happened? Nothing. Something must have happened if you're not going tonight. You're not going? Robert's got a new girlfriend. Who's Robert? The ex. But you only went out with him for a week. Thought you weren't mad about him anyway. I'm not. So what's your problem? He's bringing her tonight. But you don't fancy him. That's not the point. Am I missing something here? You have to go. Why? Because I'm not facing Mary Kay on my own when she finds out about that card. What card? Nothing. Look, there's plenty more fish. Don't, ma'am. She's right, though. What, like carrots, you mean? Who's carrots? <laughs> All right, Dad. Oh, yeah. Any chance of feeding the owl, Philip? I hold your horses. Give me five minutes, all right? Where's me suit? Hanging on your door. Thanks for the grub, Mrs. Fitz. Sorry about your job, Liam. Well, Ma's gonna go wipe. You worry about it in the morning. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. Welcome. What do you think? What? Me moustache. Where? On me hole. Where do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I could see something going on. Cool, what? Let's get a bit of bone fluff to me. You sure you're all right about me getting the job? Yeah. I always hate the smell of meat anyway. Thank like, fuck, it's Friday. Carrots? God, Mary. He asked me, what was I supposed to say? No. no. I'm sure he's not that bad, love. He is, Ma. Tell her, Antoinette. He asked me up to dance and his tongue was halfway down my neck before he knew it. Followed by his chewing gum. That is disgusting. That's carrots. Hope you like juicy fruit. Oh. oh. Lorraine, give us a hand, Mary. Where'd you get that? Dava. That is gorgeous, love. Thanks. Now. Here you go. Touched him, mommy, to have it. I changed my mind, didn't I? 
I'll never be ready in time anyway. Oh, yes, you will. Come on. You're going. Where's the foundation? Go, girl. <laughs> I'm only looking for the hair spray. Girl. Actually, I think you do. You tired? All right. You? I'm not the one going back to work. It's going to be packed tonight. Fancy going yourself? You'd show to me. You should hear the way the young fellas talk at work. Not the girls know how to look after themselves. It doesn't stop me worrying. I know. All right, son? Fine. How are you for money? Okay. Here. Look after those sisters of yours. I will. Let me get the camera. Okay. I'll drop you down. No! no. See you down there, yeah? Errol, good luck. Who needs luck, bro, what? Eh? Cocky little bastard, isn't he? <laughs> Albert. I'm sorry, Mrs. B. Oh, she's very warm, JB. She'll be fine. Go on, I didn't come all the way over here now not to babysit. Come on off out the Perry. Enjoy yourself. Celebrate your husband's new job. All right? Mom, why do you go cold? She'll be grand. Dad. Thanks for the blouse. Looks better on me, though. Glad you came out. Yeah. See you later. See you. Hi, Jack. Love the shoes. Woo! <laughs> Mary, did you tell you about my Valentine's cards? Um, yeah. Fingers crossed he's there tonight. Didn't actually say he would be, did he? No. Why else would he send the card? Come on. It's only be last in the queue. Churchyard in Martina forgot her belt. <sighs> I wish I was gone. You will, love. Mint. Let's go. Yeah, good luck tonight, all right, so. Cheers. Yeah. How are you doing, lads? All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. Ladies, you had on your Sorry to keep you waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How are you, Mr. Woodley? Ah, oh, there you are. You should have told me you were coming. Is this your wife? Yep. That's Christine. Me brother Albert. All right. Well, go on inside. You're all right. They're in the house. Have a few meals. Come on. I'll see you Monday. Okay, no problem. I'll see you. <laughs> Please, Mary Kay, come out. There's a big queue. 
We just thought it'd be a bit of a laugh. Well, you were wrong. Sorry. I even wore my new shoes and all. Guess who just walked in? Hey, right then, Mary. What are you doing home, love? Wouldn't let me in. Girl in front of me looked about ten. Ah, never mind, love. How many mates are there? It's only night out, man. For those of you who may have missed the news item, Bronya was breastfeeding her baby. Now, so think about getting out. No, moving on. Out where? States. Fuck off. I'm serious. Just looking for me here. You need a green card now, that's shite. How you doing, you're Swiss? Work illegal, like. Yeah, why not? What about us? I'm not trying to get the fucking hip, Jimmy. Well, come with me. I don't know. Why not? Oh, yeah, that's right. You have a job. Accused of my alarm. Jesus. Keep sketch. Sketch! <laughs> I got you. Are you bastards? I want to piss all over myself. <laughs> Maybe we're all better off in the habit. Friends. Friends. That's all right. Robert. This gangery looking, is she? Really thinking. You won't be able to use language like that in the convent. I'm only thinking about it. <gasps> right, who's for a drink? Go on. Ladies and gents, let's clear the floor for our next competitor. Yeah, well, I, I need a few more uh, drinks in me before the, the rhythm gets going. Look forward to that. Yeah? Yeah? You're having a hope. Thanks. The brothers are watching her like a hawk. She's out of your league anyway. Is that right? Yeah, well, you have to know your limitations, you know? Let's hear it for Errol Brumley. And now, let's go, please, right there. 
they always do that? What? Look for ages before coming over. Scared of being refused? That's my problem. I never can. No! <laughs> There's limits even for me. Just wondering if you want to dance. Slow set me on boy now. First move to the night. I suppose you didn't have slow sets in your day. No, we could dance. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, the driving used to go on down the ballerina. The what? Ballerina ballroom. Oh yeah, my granddad told me about that place already. Right. Man. What? Sorry, love. Was I snoring? Go to bed, man. No. I want to wait up for the girls. Where's Johnny? At the back, sulking. She lovely and clean. And the other ear.
city, you can probably hear ambulance and fire brigade sirens. It seems that a lot of people are being brought to a number of hospitals in different parts of the city, not just by ambulance, Sir, but also by I'll repeat that. There are reports of a fire at the Stardust nightclub in Artane. Jesus! Jesus! Martin, wake up. Wake up. What? What is it? Where did Jimmy go with Liam tonight? Stardust, where they always go. You better get up. What? Grab your coat. Come on! What are you doing home? They're not here, are they? You're supposed to be with them. John, what's wrong? Oh. 
Oh, Jesus, no. So who do you think is responsible for this? Did you have any children in the fire? I'm sorry. Had you got children in the fire? Yeah. How are they doing? We found Antoinette. Mary and Martin are still missing. So where to now? At least have a salt in there. Yeah. Hey, hey, where are you going? We were told to come here. Yeah, we were all told to come here, man. The door is open. Oh, need to see our wedding band. Why? They need to see the serial number on it. What? Save them, I just the one they have. Please, Christine. Please.
Lorraine. Right. better you remember them the way they were. Both of them? No, Jesus, no. Don't say that! Don't you say that! Mary! Marina! I want to see my nurse! Please, please. Let me see my nurse! I want to see my nurse! The scale of the Stardust disaster is only now becoming clear. Already it has been described as the worst disaster in the history of the state. Within 15 minutes of the first sighting of the fire, the entire Stardust complex was completely gutted. The Taoiseach has cancelled the Fianna Fáil Ordesh in the RDS and an impromptu cabinet meeting is now taking place. This is my, this is my native parish and uh, I would know... I know most, very, very ma large number of the families concerned. It's a, it's a, it's a terrible hazard, hazard, hazard. And it makes one wonder how careful we've been in terms of inspection, premises of this kind. The government has announced Tuesday the 17th of February as a national day of mourning, with the current death toll standing at 44 and set to rise. Grief and shock has turned into anger, with victims, families and survivors asking two questions. How did the fire start and why were so many young lives lost? So you're saying categorically all the exit doors were open? Categorically all the exit doors were open. I see. Everything will come out. When this inquiry, that's what the inquiry is for. And the truth will come out. And that's all I'm interested in, Mr. Truth. We will move in the doll probably on Wednesday to establish a tribunal uh, under the 1921 Act. Letters of sympathy have poured in from across the globe. Pope John Paul II, who only two years ago expressed his love for the young people of Ireland, sent a message describing how deeply saddened he was by the news of the deaths and suffering of so many young people. When did you first notice fire in the building? Around between quarter past and half one this morning. We were all up dancing. We looked around to our left. The whole, there was one of the bouncers that lifted up a screen. There was a big blaze. And once you done that, the place just went to... What sort of a screen? It was clothed. Um, I managed to make it to the main door where there's about, I think there's about 100 people in there with me. And uh, I was pushed back and therefore we had, you know, my whole body had fallen into the Come on, it's fire. let's get you upstairs. It was coming in and nobody could breathe for about three minutes. I don't know how any of us lasted. Honestly, I don't. You know? What ages are they? Uh, he's 19, glad here now, and the other son is 24, he's two kids. This is a normal lung. And this is your son's. The left lung shows similar deterioration. The lining membrane has severe scarring from the excessive inhalation of carbon monoxide and other toxins. So what are you saying? The prognosis is not good. Well, what do you mean? We're doing all that we can. Shh, 
You save your strength, love. The doors were locked, ma'am. You couldn't get out. Mary, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Mary, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You see? I'm sorry. Is it true? It's not to. No! No! Justice Keen. What is it? They've renewed the bastard's license. But the tribunal isn't even over yet. Are they taking that piss? Do any good, John. Come on.
drink in there! No one... How can you do that? See you, Anthony. the environment bear a share of the responsibility for the scale of the disaster in three areas. Their failure to make building regulations under the Planning Act, their failure to respond to the crisis of morale and efficiency in the Dublin Fire Brigade, although warned of its seriousness by the then city manager in 1978, and their failure to ensure that there were adequate training facilities for firemen and fire officers. The Fire Prevention Department was grossly understaffed at the time of the Stardust applications for planning permission. The staff did not have the specialist qualifications required for the proper assessment of an application such as this. The fact that there was no inspection whatever of this building by any member of the Fire Brigade, either in the Fire Prevention Department or Firefighting Service, from the day it opened until the fire, was one of the most disquieting facts to emerge at the inquiry. When the building was open to the public, the owners were under a high degree of responsibility to ensure that the premises were properly and efficiently marked so as to ensure fire safety. This they manifestly failed to do. Mr. Eamon Button bears a special responsibility for the practice of keeping emergency exits secured with chains and padlocks, a recklessly dangerous practice. Nevertheless, it is the view of this tribunal that the origin of the fire was in all probability arson. Probable arson. What sort of answer is that? Bastard didn't even have the decency to turn up. Mr. Butterley, have you any comment to make on the outcome of the tribunal? Well, we have been vindicated. I see no reason why it shouldn't be business as usual. Is it true your intention is to claim against Dublin Corporation for malicious damages? <sighs> Thank you. Right, um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you all for coming. I um, didn't expect such a big turnout. Um, I suppose we'd better get down to business. You all know me and Jim, and you all recognise Mr. Hanahoe. F.O.'s Amy. You up the dubs. 
He's agreed to be our solicitor. And what gives you the right to represent us, what? Well, I'm not trying well, to... Are you organising anything? Ah, it's Flash Harry, what? And his bleeding dancing queen of a brother there. Why not just fuck off? Don't tell me to fuck off. I'll get over there and thump the head out of you. Yeah? Yeah. Come on, then, you yeah, shoot, mate. I'll reorganise your bleeding face for you. That's enough! So. Please! If we don't stick together, we're never going to get anywhere. With the help of our solicitor, we examined the 600-page tribunal report. Black smoke started falling. 310 witnesses were heard over seven months, including Eamon Butterley, the owner of the Stardust. The report said that the Stardust did not comply with 12 public resort bylaws, 12 fire protection standards and six draft building regulations. The report states that there is no evidence of an accidental origin of the fire and equally no evidence that the fire was started deliberately. But the report does arrive at the legal probability of arson. Probable arson, but no evidence. The probable arson ruling gave Eamon Butterley solid ground to pursue his £3 million malicious damages case against Dublin Corporation, which he lodged within a week of the fire. The tribunal found that the main entrance, Exit 2, was inadequate as an escape route. The outer doors of the main entrance were kept permanently shuttered. Steel plates were welded internally to the inside of the toilet windows. There were also vertical bars welded to the outside of the windows. And of the five emergency exits, Exit 3 was locked with a padlock and chain. Exits 4 and 5 had a padlock and chain draped across the panic bars. The decision to keep exits locked and chained was made by Mr Eamon Butterley. I asked Tom Kennan, the head doorman, if all fire exits were unlocked and he answered me that they were and he had men stationed at each exit in accordance with standard procedure. I personally saw that two of the exits were open. So we have chains on them! People saw the chains on the door! How can you say that?! We've prepared a brief statement. As representatives of the Stardust victims, we wish to make it clear that we have no problem with the legal probability of arson arrived at by Justice Keane. But we emphasise that no positive finding of arson was arrived at and no such evidence to date has materialised. We welcome his damning indictment of Mr Eamon Butterley in particular with regards to Mr Butterley's recklessly dangerous practice of keeping exit doors chained or locked. All he had to do was hire an extra three men to supervise the doors. Three? Wouldn't have cost him any more than 50 quid. That's roughly one pound for each life lost. One pound. On receipt of legal advice, we have forwarded a letter to the Director of Public Prosecutions, Mr Eamon Barnes, calling for the owners of the Stardust to be prosecuted for manslaughter on the charge of reckless negligence leading to death. Where have you been? You should be in bed. You have to deal with the living too, John. <sighs> Not now, Chrissy. 
talk to me. Don't clam up on me. And say what? I don't care anything. You shouldn't have let them go. Are you saying it's my fault? No. Then why did you say that? I, I don't know. It just... It's just what, John? All this time? Is that what you've been thinking? It's my fault? No one gives a damn. Our girls are six feet under and no one gives a fuck! Don't you blame me. Don't you dare blame me! I'm trying to hold it together, keep this family together, and you're like pricking around in your pool table down in the shed! What the fuck do you want me to do? Help me! Don't you ever say that to me again. Why won't you look at me? Jimmy. Carol. How's it going? Getting there, you know. Get me in to get in to see you, but you know yourself, the longer you leave it. All right, lads. Messers, the pair of them. Have to get someone in. Sorry, Jimmy. Mr. Hawley's office, please. Keegan. Christine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sure, I'll hold. Can I help? Well, if he could get back to us, this is our fourth time to call him. I, I realise he's a very busy man, but he's also our public representative. And right now, I think he needs all the positive publicity he can get. Who's next? It's Gerald. <clears throat> it has been brought to our attention that a Garda report submitted to the Director of Public Prosecutions opens the possibility that the cause of the fire might not have been malicious, but a result of either faulty wiring or a defective heating system. This report does not seem to have been taken on board. We also find the DPP's decision that there are insufficient grounds to prosecute the owners of the Stardust, both contradictory and dismissive of the Tribunal's findings. 
It's a great shock to learn that nobody is to be held accountable or responsible for the deaths of our children. Higher that up. Has emerged since the Tribunal of Inquiry in 1981. Judge O'Hanrahan said he was satisfied that the fire was started maliciously. Eamon Butterley said the finding was final proof of what he had always maintained. Today, the judge approved a settlement figure of just over £580,000 in favour of Mr. Butterley. Don't worry. It's not you I'm after. Congratulations on your compo. Out celebrating, were you? Were you, Butterly? Well, were you? What do you want, John? Don't you call me by my name. Right. Let's all just calm down, huh? Why don't you come inside and uh, have a drink and we'll talk about it? Are you for real? What would you do if you were me? If your kids, your flesh and blood, died in that, that crematorium, huh? Look, just put the chain down, please, John. I warned you. Look, this is going to have to stop. Oh! I... Please! Oh! Oh! Then I'll call the guards. They died inside that door. Inside your door. My girls. My beautiful girls. I don't know, I just wasn't up to it today. How's Errol? How'd it go? Suspended sentence. Could have been worse. I have to pay Butterly a sum of £1,457 for damages. Now I'm giving him money. You think that's right, James? I was telling him I think we should make the press aware of it. What? What's the point? No one cares, Christine. We're yesterday's news. So what are you saying? We give up? Is that what you want, Bernie? We just forget about our kids? That's not fair. You just want to give up the committee? Everyone's pulling at me. Peter and the rest of the kids. I can't keep doing this. I can't. We're fighting everyone else's cause and we're not getting anywhere. We will. When? When, Christine? We'd be better off than doing our own thing. There's strength in numbers. Not for me. What are you going to do? I'm taking them to court myself. I'm sorry. You work in a solicitor's office. I only started last week. Find out what you can. I wanted him dead. That's not the way to go, John. Fight the good fight. Yeah. 
That's right. With what? The judge rules the fire was malicious. But he gets his compensation. It's them and us, Chrissy. The golden circle. You know what the legal blokes call the tribunal? Gold dust. Lying in their pockets with our pain. There's no point in just claiming against the Burleys. The Stardust was only insured for 250 grand. You're gonna have to go against the state in Dublin Corpo as well. The way Butterly did? Pretty much, yeah. Then that's what we'll do. The thing is, they're not going to admit liability. If they can drag it through the courts, they will. They'll use every legal loophole possible. It could take years just to get one case to court. I don't care how long it takes, Jimmy. Solicitors aren't cheap, Christine. You chose the right profession then, didn't you? You might have to pay all of their costs as well. I'm doing this, Jimmy. give up. Sometimes I want to. I want to just close my eyes and not think. Not see. But it's never going to go away. Would you have said yes if Liam asked you up? I drop into his ma sometimes, and I know she's glad to see me and all. But our families, our ma's, they still have us. Look at what they've got, Jimmy. Look at us. What a liar. All right, John. I'm chasing that up for you. I don't believe it when I see it. You see it. Put the letter.
What's going on, John? Families destroyed, Christine. All because of greed. They died because of greed. No, 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 no. Don't be stupid, John. Nobody cares. Nobody cares, Chrissy. Get rid of us. Get rid of us. I can do him. I know I can. Army training. You think that's what Mary and Martina want? What Antoinette wants? You with blood in your hands. It's blood. I don't know. Maybe. Don't you think we've been through enough already without losing you as well? I won't have it, John. You do this, that's it. I'll turn me back on you. You will never see me or the kids again. I mean it. Get rid of it. Or you needn't bother coming home. At present, there are 245 writs by Stardust victims. Claims for liability against the state, Dublin Corporation, Eamon Butterley, Patrick Butterley, Silver Swan Limited, and Scots Foods. Not one. Not one. More than four years on, and not one has come to court. But the least did. And do you think that's right, Albert? Of course not right. We've been on to politicians and the law society to try and find out what's causing the delay. But we're being met with a brick wall. It's about time people knew about it. Let's show this new government. We will not be quietened. We will not go away. We will get our justice. Fucking right. Grace, peace, Mr. Keegan. Thanks. Any word from Christine? She might be coming on for a for a few days. Give me a chance to see a little more. Yeah, good. And Errol? He's okay. I'll let him know we were asking for him, won't you? Jesus! Sorry, I'm coming again. Yeah, I'm trying to get into the car. Oh, Come on, it's okay. It's okay. Here we go. Go ahead. It's all right. Ooh. Ah, we are going straight to the hospital this time. Oh, We're going. Thanks, Albert. We've removed seven yards of his intestine, but I'm afraid the cancer is too far advanced. How long has he got? We're talking months rather than years. I'm sorry. He watched his mother die of cancer. I don't want him told. with hospitals. Do you hate me, Dad? Hate you? You told me to look after them, Dad. I didn't. I didn't look after them, Dad. I didn't. I 
wasn't your fault, son. Not your fault. Huh? It's your fault. Huh? Almost 300 people initiated compensation claims against the state, but the cases still haven't come to court. Relatives' committees have urged the government to speed up the process of compensation. They'd threaten to march on the Doyle if their claims weren't dealt with. Today's announcement by the Taoiseach is the government's answer to that pressure. Dr Fitzgerald announced that the tribunal, chaired by Mr Justice Donald Barrington, will begin work within three weeks. Claimants will have the right to accept or reject its individual award recommendations. If they accept, they must call off any other court proceedings. What the government is offering is a compensation tribunal. Another tribunal? This will be different. Each individual will be seen privately and assessed for the compensation. So what's the catch? Huh? All claims against the defendants, including the Butterleys, will have to be dropped. But the fuckers are trying to buy us off. They're giving us an option. We don't want the shagging money. We want them to admit liability. What about you, John? Piss them. It's up to each individual to decide what they want to do. Are you going for it? We still intend going the legal route. So it's okay for us, but not for you, is that it? No. No, fuck this. Come on. something. Solicitor reckons we get the same at this tribunal as we would if we went to court. Never about the money. Put some meat in those bones. If you were awarded an accepted compensation, you had to sign away your right to establish any liability for the deaths of 48 young lives. If you didn't accept compensation, you could still take the legal route, but no one had the money to do that. That was the choice we were given. I lost my brother, Jimmy. My son, Liam. My two daughters, Mary and Martina. We suffered nervous shock, severe mental trauma, fits of alcoholism. We assaulted the honor of the stardust. I love this girl. They refuse me. Tribunals refuse me compensation. Should have gone to court. We can appeal. Too damn right we will. John's appeal would be refused in the Supreme Court, but he was never to find that out. Within a few months, the cancer had spread to his kidneys. I can see that. 
I'm Chrissy. Mary. Martina. They're smiling at me. Don't cry now. <laughs> Stay strong for the kids. <laughs> I believe most of us regretted taking the compensation. 48 people died, and many more victims and their families' lives were shattered. 25 years later, the question of liability is still unanswered. In memory of Michael Barrett, Richard Bennett, Carol Bissett, Jimmy Buckley, Paula Bourne, Carolyn Carey, Joan Cullen, Jacqueline Croker, Liam Dunn, Michael Farrell, David Flood, Thelma Fraser, Michael French, Josephine Glenn, Michael Griffiths, Robert Hillock, Brian Hobbs, Eugene Hogan, Marta Kavanagh, Martina Keegan, Mary Keegan, Robert Kelly, Mary Kennedy, Mary Kenny, Margaret Kernan, Sandra Lawless, Francis Lawler, Maureen Lawler, Paula Lewis, Eamon Luckman, George McDermott, Marcella McDermott, William McDermott, Julie MacDonald, Theresa MacDonald, Jared McGrath, Caroline McHugh, Donna Mann, Helen Mangan, James Miller, Susan Morgan, David Morton, Kathleen Muldoon, George O'Connor, Brendan O'Mara, John Stout, Margaret Thornton, Paul Wade. May the deceased and their families, the injured and those who survived, never be forgotten. <laughs>